Today, we'll be learning how to create a new course for our clients within Cloud Radio. Courses can be a great way to share and test your users' knowledge and get them trained up on things without leaving the portal. Most commonly, they're used to reduce ticket volume and increase awareness. After all, a trained end user is a safer and smarter end user. Let's start by navigating over to the Partner dropdown on the left-hand side of the Feature Sets and clicking on Content. We can see that there are already three courses preloaded within the Cloud Radio tenant. To make a new one, we'll click on Add at the top right. For content type, we'll click on Courses. I'll be making a course on creating company groups in Cloud Radio, so I'll go ahead and name my course Cloud Radio. Keep the naming convention simple. Courses of the same type will be bundled together. If I choose to make more Cloud Radio courses, they'll be easy for my users to locate. Next, I'll leave this course as available to everyone. You can also create courses only for admins, which is useful if they're portal training or other products that you'd like only them to see. I'll skip the course description this time for the sake of the video. I can also select the company groups that I'd like to publish this out to. In this case, I'll select it for all. Once I'm ready, I'll go ahead and click Submit. Now my course category is created, but we still have to make the course within it itself. Once again, I'll click on Add at the top right to make a new course. Let's start by filling out the overview. Let's click on Category. Just like the naming convention before, I'll keep it simple. Cloud Radial. Next, I'll pick a name. The name will be the course displayed to the users. In my case, the course will be called Creating Company Groups. Tags are similar to the naming convention and are optional. Similar tags will allow users to quickly find like courses. I'll go ahead and tag this one as Product Training. The description of the course should be as detailed as possible. After all, this will set the stage for the user as to why this course is important and what it will entail. As a best practice, it's always nice to include information about who should take the course, what they'll learn at a high level, how long it'll take, and what they'll get out of it. I'll use a little movie magic to pre-fill mine. Voila! If you plan on making it a test, you can also set a minimum passing score. By default, the minimum passing score is set to 70. You can also set a certain number of months before the course expires, so you can keep users up to date on the latest material. Of course, you can check on who's enrolled in the course and who's completed it, as well as who hasn't. More on that in a bit. Don't forget to add a course image to make it easy to identify and understand. I'll do that right now. Now that the overview is all set, let's fill out some actual lessons. Let's head over to the second tab over and click on Add a Lesson. These modules will serve as the building blocks for the course. It's up to you to add as many or as few as you need to help your users understand the material. I'll name my first lesson and I'll fill out a bit on the overview that says what the lesson will be about. In the lesson section, you can input manual lessons from text or documents. You can also add in YouTube material, and I came prepared. I've got my company groups lesson, which I think would be really good to add in here. I'll click on embed, which is the second option from the left here, and add in my link. Make sure you have permission from the YouTube channel and content creator to use the content. Most vendors and partners are okay, like Microsoft, but it never hurts to double check. You can also add additional information on the sidebar if you think it'll be helpful to users. It's recommended that you fill out as many lessons as possible from here. That way you won't have to add one at a time. If you're choosing to test your users, the exam button can be found at the top right of each lesson. Let's set a question. I'll click on the add a question button and I'll fill out the question itself. For this example, I'll make mine a simple yes or no question. Remember to tick the box off that says if it's the correct answer. Then click Submit when you're done. Now that my very short course is ready, I can publish it out with the Publish button at the top right. I'll head over to University and Courses to see it live on the left-hand side of the Feature Sets. And yes, we see it live. It's even got a required banner at the top right. If I enroll in it, I can now click on the first lesson. We can see the overview here, as well as how many lessons there are. I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like, too. I'll run through this like a user and show you exactly what it looks like. If I click on the lesson, in this case it'll pull up the video, additional material will show up on the sidebar here, and if I click Next, my question pops up. I'll get it wrong here on purpose, and click on Next. It'll inform me that I've failed and I must redo it. Now if I pass it, I 
I'll have the option to get a certificate showing that I've passed it. If I click on it, I get a digital PDF with the company name, my username, in this case Azure Div Admin, and what course I completed, as well as what day I completed it down below. If you want to see who's enrolled in the course and who's passed it, you can always navigate down to the compliance drop down in the feature sets and click on training. From here, you can get an overview of the courses as well as who's enrolled in it by clicking on it and who's completed it. Create your own courses to develop content that can help train your users in a fun and engaging way.